of the Lord. Yes, you will. It's your beloved holiness instructor, discipleship drill sergeant. About to get into the book. I'd like to thank all those watching Facebook, YouTube, all our visitors that come from far and from near, all the people striving to be in the kingdom, all the people that's in the kingdom, all the people that got baptized and waiting to receive the promise, which is the Ruach HaKadosh, the spirit of separation, the spirit of holiness, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, all those keep pressing, keep asking. Almighty is faithful on his promises. All his promises are yea and amen. Definitely thank those out there. Keep striving. All you people trying to get in the body, you know what to do. Repent from dead works. Have faith in Almighty. Dip yourself in that water. And be baptized in the name of Yeshua Mashiach of Nazareth for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you and unto your children and to all those afar off. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now, with all that said being done, I want to thank, thank, thank the Almighty. Thank the Almighty for us standing. It's been pressing, 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 pressing for True Hebrews United. We see people come and we go. Visitors come and go. People come on the rocky ground and they start obeying and they start off right. But by and by they get offended and they fall away. You know, you see other people, they're serving the Lord, but certain things is choking them out. Whether it be their wife, whether it be their job, whether it be this. They can't blossom. They can't produce fruit. A little side note, because I'm not really dealing with it. If you don't think you're on rocky ground, on thorny ground, let's give you a hint. Let's say you're in a body you repented from dead works. Let's say that you even got baptized. Let's even say that you even have the spirit of the Almighty. But you notice because of your job or because you're taking kids to football practice and baseball practice and do this and you're a coach and do this, you're not reading like you could. You're not reading as much. Are you skip days and reading? You go whole days without praying, or you barely pray. You haven't invite no one to the house of the Almighty or to come in the congregation or the fellowship that they might be saved. Outside of when your congregation goes, you don't do that. You haven't invite no one to your house, a brother or sister to your house for fellowship, or visit a brother and sister to your house for fellowship. You wouldn't ha haven't went out and helped the poor. If you haven't done any of these things, there's a good probability that you're on thorny ground and you're not going to produce any fruit. You're not reading every day or praying every day. You're not trying to grow. If you normally read a chapter and it's been a year and you're still only reading a chapter every day versus reading two chapters, or if you're not praying more, or if you're not taking the time to study, doing an in-depth study on any topic in the Bible, if you haven't took the time to go pick up a fatherless or visit the widows, if you haven't talked, only time you do the work of the Lord is when the whole congregation goes, but outside of you going to meet up and assembling with the brothers, you don't do nothing pertaining to the kingdom of God, there's a good probability you're on thorny ground. Because it says you bring if no fruit. It says you choke out the word of God and you bring no fruit to perfection. It's been a whole year and you haven't about no one to be saved. It's been a whole year and you still haven't read the whole Bible. There's a good probability you're on thorny ground. But today is your chance to get out of that thorny ground because I just brought it to your uh, attention. Well, that I said being done, I'm not preaching on thorny ground, but that just came to my mind. So let's let the fingers do the walking and the scriptures do the talking. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. Let's read. Let's get it. Let's get it. Get some. If thou, ha if thou hast run with the footmen and they weary thee, how can thou contend with the horses? So he's saying... If you're trying to run with the footmen and you can't even keep up with the footmen, how are you going to run with the horses when it's time for you to keep up with the horses? Let's keep going. And if in the land of peace, I want you to key on this, in the land of peace, wherein thou trusteth, they weary thee, then how would thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? So if there's limited to no or limited persecution, it's real, real small. And you find yourself not obeying or coming, or you find yourself compromising already in the land of peace, what makes you think you're going to be able to stand when persecution comes? Because the fact that you think you can will make this scripture none and void. But he's saying you can't, if you can't make it with the footmen, you can't make you definitely can't run with no horses. And if you can't obey and you compromise in the time of peace, there ain't no way in the world you're going to be able to stand for righteousness and true holiness in the time of persecution. 
and let's keep going. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Well, we're going to start at about verse 24. Matthew 7, 24. Let's get it. Therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine, if you hear the Almighty saying, this is red writing, and, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, and it was founded, uh, for it was founded upon the rock. For every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man that built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So I want to kill two things. For you to be able to stand, you have to hear the Almighty saying, He that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. So you need to be seeking truth. And then number two, you're trying to build a house. And our body is supposed to be the temple. You're trying to be building a house unto the Lord. Our body is supposed to be the temple. But the key, other second key thing I want to deal with is the rain and the storm will come. In one way, shape, or another, the storm will come. Whether you build it upon the sand or whether you build it upon the rock. It's going to come. Temptation or trials or, or uh, persecution will come your way. But if you can't run with the footmen and you can't make it in the land of peace, what makes you think you're going to make it when the swollen of the Jordan are with the horsemen? But let's keep going. John chapter 14. I want to key on something. It's all going to come together towards the end. John chapter 14. We're going to set up verse 15. You there already? Yes. Good stuff. John chapter 14, 15. It says, If you love me, keep my commandments. I like this scripture because it's so plain and so simple, and yet it crushes probably most of the people that says they believe and they save and they got the Spirit and they're a new creature and they're born again, whatever Christian, whatever they call themselves. The bottom line is you hate the Almighty because you're not keeping His commandments. That's the bottom line. So I'm going to show you how this ties in. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans. Chapter 10. Amen. There we go. Romans chapter 10. And I'm going to read verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord, Yeshua, and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him up from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So there's a lot of people that say they believe, but if you do believe and you love him, you'll keep his commandments. So let's read another scripture. I'm slow reading. It's all going to tie in. Matthew, Mark, chapter 16. You might want to bookmark Romans because we're coming right back to it. Amen. Mark chapter 16. And we're going to start at verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into, the, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be down. So now, it's not only believing, it's believing and being baptized. This hits on a lot of these Baptist churches and a lot of this IUIC and there's another false camp saying you don't have to be baptized too. Whatever, I-S-U-P-K or whatever, and I-U-I-C-C. They're false camps. And we're saying you don't have to be baptized. But are they saying baptism is just the word, but you need to be born of the water and the spirit. And Yeshua Mashiach got baptized and told John the Baptist to baptize me to fulfill all righteousness. So I don't even know how they get that, that you don't need to be baptized. But besides that, you have these Baptists saying you don't need to be baptized. But then it says here, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So we get into the situation where you saying you believe, 
are you you saying you believe and you are baptized, which you should come out a new creature for you to even be baptized and come out a new creature. You would have had to repent. So for you to repent, you would have had to be keeping the commandments of the Lord, which is showing that you love the Lord. Because if he says you love me, you keep my commandments. Well, let's keep going. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're going to start at verse 8. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you sin, you can't please the Lord. But ye are not of the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of our Mashiach, he is none of his. So now we see that you have to believe and be baptized. And you have to have his spirit. You have to have his spirit. Because if you don't have his spirit, he is not your father. You're not his son. You're not his daughter. But let's see how you get that spirit. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 5. And we're dealing with persecution. It's all going to tie in. Acts chapter 5. And we're going to start at verse... 31. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness to sins because he came to his own people. And we are his witnesses of these things and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God have given to them that obey him. So if you ain't obeying how did you get the Spirit of God? How did you get the Spirit of God disobeying the Word of God? Why is it that every single person says, oh, I have the Spirit? But it says He's only given the Spirit to them that obey Him. Because you would have had to repent from dead works. Then you would have had to be baptized in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Then the promise is He'll give you the Spirit of God. With this Spirit, He gives you... We're going to get into that because we're going to deal with, we're dealing with persecution. So my question is, if you're saved... He's saying you have the Spirit, but you disobey it, and He only gives the Spirit to them that obey Him. So how did you get the Spirit disobeying the Word of God? That makes no sense. This is why when people, it, it, it amazes me, people will come, oh, you know, oh, you're wrong and this, you're wrong and this, oh, this and this. They, they always want to bring up some hi historical uh, Babylon, the Timbuktu, and the book of Enoch, and the book of Jaser, and the book of this, and the book of uh, Bulbasaur, and the book of Pikachu, and they want to bring up all this other foolishness, but they ain't even obeying. So if you ain't obeying, I know you don't got the Spirit, and if you ain't obeying, the Lord's not hearing your prayers, and if you're obeying, the Almighty's not talking to you, you're not prophesying nothing because He's not telling you nothing because you're in disobedience, and the Almighty never blesses disobedience. Every time a king that was even right with the Lord disobey, he dealt with them. Every time a prophet disobeyed like Balaam, he dealt with them. Every time the people disobeyed, he dealt with them. He wasn't with them. He turned his face against them. So how are you disobeying, but yet you have all this knowledge that you supposedly got from the all high, all, uh, the, for, for the Almighty, the Most High? It's not going to happen. But let's keep going. Because he only gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. So let's see what happens when you get the Spirit. Titus. Chapter 1. We're going to deal with verse 16. They profess that they know God. There's a lot of people that say, hey, I believe. I'm not an atheist. I don't believe in Big Bang or evolution. I believe there's a Most High, there's an Almighty, and He sent His Son, Yeshua Mashiach. I believe. They profess that they know him, but in works they deny him. What? How do they deny him? In works? How? Being abominable. What are you doing? You're doing things that God, all, the Almighty utterly detests. And disobedient. So if you're disobedient, he says, the Almighty gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. And he says, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, then you're none of his. But let's keep going. And unto every good work of reprobate. So if you're disobedient, you don't have the Holy Ghost. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, we read, He that have not the Spirit is none of His. But now, now let's get why it's so important to have the Spirit. To have the Spirit. If you're trying to be saved, 
You should be praying every single day, Lord, fill me to the brim of the Holy Spirit. Fill me. I want to receive that promise that was prophesied from the very beginning that you have circumcised a heart and you give put a new spirit in them and you'll make a new covenant with them. Not of the old covenant which they transgressed, but a new covenant and all men will know me. It says that same spirit will lead us and guide us to all truth. That same spirit will have it to where no man will teach us that everyone will know him. And what does that mean? Not saying you don't need a preacher, don't need a pastor, but there'll be some things and some situations you'll get in, and you may not have the scripture, but the Holy Spirit, the, the Ruach HaKadish, will condemn the light. Man, that don't even seem right. And then about six months later, you're just reading, you're like, ah, oh, man, that's right in the book. Man, that's right. Thank you, Almighty. Thank you. That's because you got the Spirit. Or you have a question in the Word of God, and you read it, and it may take six months, it may take a year, and boom. There you go, you got the answer. Or you may be in a situation and you have to use righteous judgment, that's when the Spirit comes in. Because there may not be a scripture for every situation you deal in your life, but the Holy Spirit will help you to make right just decisions. That's why the Lord gave Solomon wisdom. He was able to make decisions and make judgments when there was no pinpoint law on that situation. There's no pinpoint law. Perfect example. Cos uh, cosmetic surgery. Some people's for it, some people's against it. We don't really have no pinpoint scripture for it, but we know have the baselines of vanity. We have the baselines of not being a stumbling block. We have baselines, okay, so this and this and this. There's no scripture saying you can't smoke cigarettes, but we know our body is the temple of the Almighty, so why are we putting poison in it? So the Holy Ghost will help us with these things. But let's see what happens when you have the, uh, what happens when you have the Spirit. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 7. Let's get it. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive the Holy Ghost, shall receive power, ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come unto you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the world. So now we read in one scripture, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're none of his. He's not your father and you're not his son or you're not his daughter. And then it says he only gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. Now when you get the Holy Ghost, you receive power from on high. Because the same Spirit that was in Yeshua Mashiach is in us. And if that same spirit committed no sin, neither God was found in his mouth, and we have that spirit, why is it that you transgress in every day and you've got to repent every day for repetitive sins? If you're saying you have the spirit of God, why do you got to repent every day? Because you willfully sin against the Lord. That same spirit was in, that was in Yeshua Mashiach, he committed no sin. So in essence, if you receive his spirit, you got power. Let's see what that power allows you to do. Let's keep going. Give me... John, 1st John, chapter 2. Amen. And we're going to start at verse, we're going to, we're going to hit verse 4. He that saith I know him, oh, that's 1st John? Oh, 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him, that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and that you have overcome the wicked one. You overcome the wicked one. You overcome the wicked one because you don't commit sin. But let's keep going, because you can only serve two masters. Either you hate the one and love the other. There's only two masters. Either you love the Almighty, or you love wickedness and Satan. Let's keep going. Revelation chapter 3. And we're going to hit verse 4. Verse 21. Verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have also overcame and I'm set down with my father in his throne. So what did he do? He overcame the world. I'll show you scripture. It says he, he overcame the world. 
So we overcome the wicked one, we overcome the world. Let's keep going. Give me uh, Revelations 12. I'm going to read verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of Amashiach. And, uh, uh, for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of his testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto death. We're going to deal with this because it's all going to tie around with if you can't run with a footman. This is all going to tie around. So now we see you receive power of on high. So for you to get the Holy Spirit, you had to obey him. So you would have had to repent from dead works and become a clean bottle for him to put new wine or put the Holy Ghost in you. Now you have power from on high to overcome sin and thus it leads you to overcome the wicked one and thus it leads you on to salvation. But he's only given that spirit to them that obey him. And once you have that spirit, you overcome the world. So now you have power to deal with persecution. Now you have power to deal with that rain and that storm that comes against your house vehemently and comes to crush your house, but you're built upon the rock because you have the Ruach HaKadish. But if you don't have the Ruach HaKadish, you ain't going to be able to run with the horsemen. You ain't going to be able to run with the footmen. You ain't going to be able to uh, not compromise in the uh, time of peace as well with the swelling of the Jordan. You need the spirit to do it. But let's keep going. Give me Acts. Give me Hebrews chapter 11. We'll go with Hebrews. How, much, how much time we got? We've got 33 minutes. What? 39 minutes left. Okay. Perfect. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to start at verse 23. By faith, when Moses was born, he was hid three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child, that they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, when Moses was coming, the years refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Amashiach greater riches than treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, and endured in seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, lest the destroyer of the firstborn should touch him. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, and by the dry land which, uh, which the Egyptians essayed and do, uh, to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, and after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished. Not with them that believe not, when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say more? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, and Barak, and Samuel, and Jephthah, and David also, and Samuel, and, and uh, of the prophets, who by faith subdued kingdoms, and wrought righteousness, and obtained promises, and stopped the mouth of the lions, and quenched the violence of the fire, and escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, waxed violent in flight, turned flight the armies of the aliens. Women receive their dead, raised to life. And that's good stuff. The Almighty delivered. Delivered people. People receiving the, their kids back to life. What about the others? And others were tortured. Not accepting deliverance. They were, might attain a better resurrection. And others had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yet, yeah, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. We read about the uh, prophets being in prison, put in dungeons, and Joseph. They were stoned. They were saw as son. They were cut in pieces because they believed in the Almighty. They were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goats and destitute and affliction and tormented. You could read in detail about these situations in Mac, First and Second Maccabees. Of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And we're going to get to that situation. It's going to, persecution is coming. All these having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Why? Because they didn't receive the Holy Ghost as a keeper in the Old Covenant. God having provided some better things from us, because we received the Holy Ghost for those that are obeying, that they without us shall not be made perfect. 
So now we see even in the old covenant, persecution came. But these people were founded upon the rock. These people were settled in the heart. These people, not only they were able to run with the footmen, they were able to run with the horses. They had it in their heart. I'm going to choose to serve the Lord no matter what happens. We read in Revelations about the saints that overcome the world, even hating their life, even unto death. They rather just say, hey, if I got to die, then I got to die. I was on the job the other uh, today, and then they're like, oh, you can't work. What if they have you work late? I say, hey, I'm not, I'll, I'll lose my job before I break the Sabbath. They're like, what? I was like, I'll lose my job before I tell a lie, before I murder. I'm not compromising none of this Bible to keep my job. I'm not compromising none of this Bible to make no friends. I'm not compromising none of this Bible to fill this place. If people want to disobey, then get ready to burn in the lake of fire. It doesn't, the pay's the same. Jeremiah preached and preached and preached. They didn't believe him. They went into captivity. Preached and preached and preached. They didn't believe him, went into Egypt. Preach and preach and preach. They took him into Egypt. Preach and preach and preach. And in Egypt, they still decided to worship the false queen of heaven, even in Egypt. And he said the sword's going to... And sure enough, every single thing he preached and prophesied came to pass. They didn't even believe him. From the time he was a youth all the way to the time he went into Egypt, they did not believe him. But the pay's the same. He said, Yeshua, I'm sick. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killeth all the prophets. There was many a prophets that preached. And no one believed them, and they stoned them for it. But the pay's the same. Regardless if you believe me, regardless if you ever call 501 1375, you heard the word, and you're accountable. And if you choose to disobey the word, hey, the pay's the same for me. I'm obeying. I got the Ruah HaKadish. The pay's, I, I have it in my mindset, I'm going to obey no matter what. I don't care if my wife or my kids disobey. I don't care if other brothers and sisters disobey. I'm going to obey. That's my mindset. Hey, I'm going to seek the Lord that he may delight in my ways, that in the day of judgment, he'll, he'll let me be in the kingdom for eternity. That's what I'm working. I'm working for the Lord. I'm not working to get no members. I'm not working to keep no jobs. I'm not working to keep my marriage. I'm not working for none of that. I'm working for the Lord. I'm on his pay schedule. I'm on his time clock. That's what it is. And the bottom line is, even if I did get fired for the Sabbath, that job don't even pay my bills. The Almighty pays my bills. He's the one that... He says, I give you the ability to establish wealth. If he cursed the works of my hands, it don't matter what job I got. He says, he, he cursed the, our, our forefathers to where they were putting money of a bag full of holes in it. As soon as you get paid, oh, the car broke down. As soon as you get paid, oh, I got sick. I got to rush someone to the hospital and it's going to cost this much. As soon as you get paid, oh, I got to go pay for a funeral. As soon as you get paid, he'll just make you put a, a money uh, bag of money in a bag full of holes in it. It don't matter. If he bless the works of my hand, if he can make manna come down from heaven, if he can make it to where my clothes don't wax old, if he can make it to where he can preserve Moses to where he didn't have to eat for 40 days and 40 nights, came back down, they disobeyed, went back up into the mountain for another 40 days and 40 nights. If he could preserve, uh, uh, what was it? Jacob? No, Caleb. He preserved Caleb to where he was 80 years old and he was just as strong as he was when he was 40 years old. What makes you think he can't preserve me? Is, is, the, arm, is the Lord's arm too short that he cannot reach? Is his ear too heavy that he cannot hear? If I'm obeying, he's definitely going to take care of his saints. If David says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beggars bread. As long as I live righteous, my kid's never going to beg. Never. My kids will never be no beggars. We may go through persecution, we ain't going to be begging. We may hey, suffer, hey, we may get sawed asunder, we may go through some persecution, but in the time of peace, we ain't going to be no beggars. That's just what it is. And even in the time of the swollen of Jordan, we ain't going to be no beggars. That's just what it is. We grow what we, grow what we need to grow. Because persecution will come. That storm will hit your house. And what are you going to do? Saying you believe in disobeying? What are you going to do? Revelation chapter 6. So we see here, and Hebrews that these people were saw asunder and dwelt in caves and sheepskin because they were able to run with the footmen. So when the horsemen came, they had that stamina. They were able to stand and not compromise in the time of peace. So when the swelling of the Jordan, the storm came, the swelling of the Jordan, the storm, the swelling of the Jordan, the flood, and we just read, he that heareth my word and obey it is like a man that buildeth his house upon the rock. And the wind and the storm came and they were able to stand. But they were already able to stand in Hebrews chapter 11 when it was peaceful. So when persecution came, 
like we read in Hebrews chapter 11, they were already able to stand. This is why we got to build up your faith. This is why you got to be praying that you receive this. If you don't receive the Spirit, you're not going to be able to be stand, standing, and the wicked one's going to come, and it says he's going to deceive the whole world. And you're going to think you'll be serving the Almighty, but you're really not. Perfect example. You think you're serving the Almighty, celebrating Christmas, but do your research behind Christmas. That comes from paganism. You serve the Satan. Every time you celebrate Christmas, you and your Christmas tree, both all that stuff is going to the lake of fire. But you think you're serving the Almighty, just the fact that it's not even persecution, and you're deceived, thinking that you sit having some Easter egg bunnies, and it's okay for your kids to celebrate Halloween, and it's okay for you to celebrate Christmas, you're already deceived already. So when the wicked one comes and persecution really comes on this planet, and you think, oh, I'm not going to be deceived because I believe, no, you don't. You're going to be deceived because you don't have the Ruah HaKadish. You ain't going to be able to stand. Let's keep going. Revelations chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 9. And we have opened the fifth seal. I saw under the altar the souls of those that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. We just read that in Hebrews chapter 11, right? About people, A, being assaulted. They were stoned. They didn't even receive deliverance. Hated their own. Let's keep going. Verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do thou not judge and avenge the blood of them that dwell upon the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it, should, uh, and, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed and they were should be as they were should be uh, fulfilled. So it's seen in Revelation when persecution comes, that storm comes, which it will come. That it says just wait a little bit longer because your brethren still need to be killed like you were. So all things are fulfilled. So if we read in Revelation that the storm's going to come, and we read in Hebrews chapter 11, that stuff already happened. And when you read First and Second Maccabees, if you don't know, Maccabees used to be in the, it's in the King James 1611. It was in the Bible. But it was taken out through false Catholic and Romans because it shows you who the true Hebrews is, right? And it shows the wickedness of the Romans. And also... Uh, do your research, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation wasn't even in the original Bible because they tried to take those books out, but the Almighty let them come through, just like the Almighty gave us Revelation and the Apocrypha. But besides that, we see that persecution is going to happen where people are going to be dying for keeping the word of the Almighty and faith in Yeshua Mashiach. So that's going to be the swelling of the Jordan. That's going to be when you need to keep up with the footmen. So if you can't even obey now, if you're not even obeying right now, and there's no persecution, what makes you think you're going to be able to stand? They say, oh, I'll just get my head cut off. No, you won't. Because you can't do it now. You can't obey now. So what makes you think all of a sudden you're going to muster up this strength? Because it says, shall, shall the word of God, shall your unbelief make the word of God in none effect? No, God be true and let every man be a liar. The Bible is clearly saying if you can't, if you can't last in the time of peace, in the land of peace, you're not going to make it in the swelling of Jordan. If you can't run with the footman, you're not going to make it when, the, when you have to run with the horseman. You're saying that I'm going to disobey now, and when persecution comes, I'm just going to get my head cut off. Oh, I'm just going to be able to stand. No, you won't. No, you won't, because you're going to be deceived. You celebrating Christmas, you deceived. You following a woman preacher, you deceived. You follow one of these prosperity preachers saying you don't got to keep the Sabbath and keep the commandments and that's done away with. You deceived. You having Pastor Appreciation Day, you, uh, Christmas, Christmas tree. You think Easter was the day that he was resurrected? You deceived. The definition of Easter is the Passover and he died on the Passover. You deceived. If you deceive now, when the wicked one comes and sets up his dominion, he's going to deceive the whole world. You're already deceived now. What makes you think you're not going to be deceived when he comes and sets up shop? You're going to be, you're going to be deceived. Because it says they're going to be, believe a, they'll rather believe a lie than have a love for the truth. And so it says God himself will give them a strong delusion to where they believe a lie than have a love for the truth. The Almighty is going to deceive you. If you even got past the deception of Satan, it says because you don't have a love for the truth, the Almighty is going to deceive you. I told people, I'll show people. Clear as day, you shouldn't be having no Christmas tree. Clear as day in Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. What did they say? Oh, 
I got to think about those things. Pretty much, I'm not going to give it up. I translate it for them. Oh, I got to think about those things. Oh, I got to say that out. You don't got to, stuff is plainly written. Don't do this. Oh, I got to, do not murder. I got to study that out. Don't steal. Oh, I got to study that out. If I sock you in the face, you're going to automatically say, oh, that's not righteous. Why didn't you study that out? How about I sock you in the face and you study that out? But as soon as something, as soon as it's something, hey, you're not supposed to have the Christmas tree. Oh, I got to study that out. Man, shut your mouth, hypocrite. I don't even make no sense. Joshua, chapter 24. <laughs> They'll automatically, if I punch them in the face, they'll automatically know that that's not of God. Off top. They don't got to study nothing out. Everything else in the Bible, when they can't do something, I got to study that out. It's plainly written. He didn't make the word of God to where it's so complex to where you don't know how to obey him. Come on now. He made it pretty easy. Thou shalt do, thou shalt not do. It's pretty, it's not hard. It's not hard to be saved. You just got to want it. You got to want it. You got to want it. You got to want it to eternal life. You got to want it. You got to sacrifice some things. It says, be ye a living sacrifice. You got to sacrifice having those little birthday parties and practicing your witchcraft where you have a cake and you got candles. And the whole origin of that is you blow the candles and it goes into the spirit realm and you make a wish and the spirit's bringing back what you wanted. All that's witchcraft. But you deceived. You don't study. You just, the pastor said it's okay. Yep, so there you go. Follow what pastor says, your false pastor says, not what a true pastor says, because he ain't going to have you in no practice in a witchcraft. Your church is doing the little mime, doing all this stuff, mime dancing and all, painting faces, and women painting faces when they shouldn't be painting their face and doing all this mime dancing. Look up where mime comes from. Witchcraft. So you're practicing witchcraft in the church, but yet you're trying to worship the Almighty. They did that in the Bible. They, they made a golden calf and said, these be the gods that brought us out of Egypt. They were trying to worship the true and mighty God, but they were doing it in idolatry. You practice in witchcraft and trying to do it unto the Lord. Oh, we don't celebrate Halloween. We have Hallelujah Night. Man, you, you're still celebrating it. You're trying to give God the glory. Oh, you know what? We're going to have an we're going Everyone's going to sleep in, in the name of the Lord with everyone else's wives. We're going to commit adultery unto the Lord. You know how stupid that sounds? Just like you celebrating Halloween and calling it Hallelujah Night. Just like you celebrating Christmas, which come from paganism and false gods, and you saying you're doing it unto the Lord. Uh, I'm going to commit adultery unto the Lord. That don't even make no sense. I'm a, hey, the Bible says, before thou shalt not commit adultery, it was thou shalt not have idolatry. So, if you think me sleeping with your wife is wrong, what makes you think you celebrating Christmas and false Easter and Easter egg bunnies and Halloween? You're sinning more by celebrating your little Christian and whatnot than sleeping with your neighbor's wife. Because the first commandment was love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And, and then it says, thou shalt not have any graven images. Thou shalt not work, have any pagan practices. Let's keep going. Joshua 24. And we're going to go with verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, this is to you guys, if it seem evil to serve the Almighty, if it seem evil to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether it be the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, your gods, your little false Nike shoes, your dirt devil vacuum, your devil's eggs, your angel food cake, your magic's jersey, your devil's jersey, your wizard's jersey from football and all that, basketball and all that stuff. You celebrate and you have your fish bumper sticker, you have your false picture of the Messiah, you have your statues of angels or pictures of angels, you have all these false graven images, all that foolishness, are you going to serve idol gods? Is that what you're going to do? Or the gods of the Ammonites, in whom you have dealt, but as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I have that same testimony here. As far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But the bottom line is choose what you're going to do. Persecutions come. And it's going to come against your house that you're trying to build for the Almighty. So what are you going to do? Are you going to be able to stand? Are you going to be able to have it in your mindset? Hey, no matter what happens, I want to stand when persecution comes. But for me to get to persecution, I have to be able to obey right now. And if I'm not obeying right now, then he's not going to give me his spirit. 
And if he doesn't give me his spirit, I don't have power to stand and overcome the wicked one. Because he's coming. And when he comes and deceives the whole world, how am I going to have power to overcome him? How am I going to have the power to overcome him? Because that's the, what the Ruach HaKadosh is. It's power from all high. It's the same spirit that was in us that is in Yeshua Mashiach. And he said he has overcame the world. He overcame the God of this earth. Air. So have it in your hearts. Keep pressing. If you see it's in the book, how many times I tell you, if it's in the book and it's rightly divided, obey it. Obey it. Even if you're looking for a congregation and you don't, you're fellowshipping by yourself, obey it. Obey it. If it says, hey, I need to not rejoice in someone's calamity, you look up calamity, misfortune, I can't, man, I can't be laughing at people falling down on the ground, man, I can't be laughing at it. Hey, start obeying. If he's, hey, man, I need to start keeping, say, hey, I need to eat clean. I can't just be eating this pork and all this food in this. Hey, I need to do what's right. Hey, I need to do this. Hey, my wife need to do this. Hey, I need to dress my Hey, I need to put that jewelry off or that makeup off. Whatever's in here, right, divide it, obey it. And he'll do his part. Start repenting, get baptized. And he'll give you the spirit. Once you got the spirit, you got power from on high. Once you have power from on high, you'll be able to stand against the wicked one, overcome the wicked one. And while you're doing that, you'll go on to salvation. If you endure to the end. With all that said being done, keep standing, don't drop standards. Give the Almighty a hand clap. Shalom.